right. Good morning, everybody. We are so glad that you're able to join with us. As you can tell, we've been working the last couple of minutes to hopefully get all of our technology in place. So this, as always, is going to be a fun team event. We are really excited today to come to you live from Rogersville, Tennessee, and we are going to be doing Hort for the Holidays, as well as a fun 2021 year-end recap. So this is what our gardens look like a little bit right now. I know this is one of my favorites. I think it's one of Celeste's favorites, the uh, Arkansas, yeah, Amsonia Huberectii right there, Amsonia Huberectii. But as we enjoy the fall colors, we are also transitioning to the great plants for the holidays. And so on this next slide, you'll see some of the great um, plant information and uh, production that we have going on in horticulture here in East Tennessee. So hopefully in the reminder email, you got a little video that actually is a great tour of this very Christmas tree operation. We were going to go there live, but there's not a lot of cell service in Mountain City, Tennessee. And so we called some of our extension friends and they gave us some video that they had shot of this production operation. And so that's kind of our uh, pairing for today. You have a video that shows some of the great Christmas tree production that takes place in East Tennessee. And then we are going to take you live um, right now, really, to a greenhouse in East Tennessee that grows some beautiful poinsettias. So we are in Rogersville, Tennessee, which is in Hawkins County. If you come up uh, 11 from Knoxville, kind of going northeast, you will eventually come through uh, Granger County and then you will get to Hawkins County. And so Melody, who you know is our Green County agent, but also Jack Price, who is our Hawkins County horticulture agent and the master gardener coordinator here are in the greenhouse. We are gonna bounce out to the greenhouse and you're gonna hear and uh, see some beautiful images from one of our family run greenhouse operations in East Tennessee and really learn about how the production of this fabulous um, winter crop takes place in our greenhouse production. So Melody and Jack, I'm gonna turn the floor over to you and you get us kicked off, introduce us to Terry and the rest of the crew now, but we just wanna get you started with a little bit of how they got started in poinsettias because we all know poinsettias can be a little bit persnickety as far as growing them. We all enjoy their beauty. But Terry, why don't you tell us about how the process gets started, well, how y'all got into this? Okay, well, let me start by saying that Paul, my husband, uh, started this business between 48, 50 years ago. Him and his daughter, Cindy, son, Glenn, and his first wife, Myrna. They started this business and grew it. And then Paul and I married back in 83. And uh, we built more houses. Uh, when well, they started out with two houses, and now we have like 16 greenhouses. Wow. But we raised poinsettias in about uh, six greenhouses now. Used to, we raised them in eight greenhouses. Uh, we cut our production down in the last three years, and mainly because of COVID. 60% uh, of our poinsettias are raised for churches in honor of or in memory of. They'll go anywhere between Johnson City, uh, Bristol, Greenville, Knoxville, uh, Oak Ridge, and also down in the Gatlinburg area. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So 60% of the business is going to churches. That's pretty remarkable. So that means that, you know, being here for this length of time in the county, uh, you've, you've actually developed a great rapport um, throughout the county and even beyond. So uh, one of the things I want to talk about in that regard before we get started on some of this other stuff is, like Terry mentioned with COVID, uh, rampant last year, um, they were kind of left with a lot of extra poinsettias here um, in the greenhouse uh, because, you know, a lot of folks weren't attending church and that kind of thing. Businesses were, were closed. But Terry came up with a really cool idea. She made a phone call to the school board. And why don't you tell us more about how you, you know, how that came to be? Well, we called the school board here in Hawkins County and uh, wanted a list of everybody within the school system that worked in the school system. Didn't matter if it was the bus shop, if it was a teacher, cafeteria worker, on the administrative end of it, teachers, and uh, got a list of everybody that worked. And we got busy putting them in pot covers and we put them in our trucks and hauled them. Took us about three days, didn't it, Debbie, to haul these to everybody? Yes. Uh, and, uh, but we gave one to all the teachers because we thought maybe by doing that, we put a smile on a few faces and it didn't make us, and it made us help to feel good too. Right. 
but um, it was a uh, it was a challenge last year uh, on poinsettias. Uh, beautiful crop, and it just would have just made us sick to have dumped them. But it all came through. We helped people; they helped us, and it's, it was just good. And what a great way to cultivate uh, connections and communities uh, by doing something that special and giving back. But because, like I say, you've been here for a long time, and so it's it's a two way street. Um, so tell us about some of the produ production techniques. So I know one thing that Debbie told me when I first got here this morning was temperature and light because it's very specific with poinsettias more so than any other horticulture crop Absolutely. and you have a lot of industries surrounding you here with lots of big bright lights so how does that work y'all how are you you know working around that well back about I guess 20 years ago uh, we had a greenhouse that didn't color up and we had to dump those whole house poinsettias. So the next year we got a little smarter and we asked the people the, and all the industry, industries around us to either put guards on their lights or to turn their lights off during our season. There is about a month, month and a half that we cannot let darkness, I mean light get to our poinsettias at night. They need the daytime to, uh, light, but they don't need that dark. I mean, they need to be totally dark at night. Wow. So everybody around us worked with us and they still do. If it wasn't for that, we couldn't raise poinsettia crop here. But when Paul first started the greenhouse here, there was no industries around us. Mm. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, everybody's just pitched in. I have great family that's helped us. Our sons, Waco and Dawson, our grandsons have even worked here. And uh, we've just had a good family thing going on here. Yeah. And speaking of that, it being a family thing, because like I say, we've, we've got Terry and, and Debbie out here and Connie's up front right now, uh, man in the store. But one thing that you will notice with this family is that they have a really good time, y'all. It's not just about work, but there is a lot of hard work. I mean, obviously you can see with 16 greenhouses, um, it does take a lot, but it's, it's family run, it's family oriented, and they have a good time working together. That's one of the, the cool things about this operation. Uh, speaking of of the plants again and I almost said flowers and that's one thing I want to to make that very clear distinction and Terry you might want to show them here okay uh, we often say that the flowers are coloring right but actually um the color that you see are called bracts, bracts. right and this is actually the flower right here here in the center yeah so that's just one of the the cool uh concepts of the poinsettia as yeah. well the bracts, our temperatures, we run our temperatures a little bit higher. And as the bracts get the size we want them, then we start cooling our temperatures down. That'll make the bracts get bigger, brighter. The colors will be a lot brighter. But we also try not to push them too hard, too. This year, we did have to push size a little bit uh, because they were a little bit on the short side. And mm -hmm. so we really had to jump in there and get things going. Hugh Conlon, yeah, used to be at the extension, he helps a lot with us so awesome. uh i mean i can call him i sent soil samples after they came in to Hugh. he's on the phone with me he still helps us tremendously good friend right and for those of you that don't know who she's referring to hugh conlon was uh, one of our ornamental port specialists uh, back in the day he worked out of the washington county extension office uh, and still very active with a lot of our local uh, consumer and commercial horticulture operations yes. here in northeast Ten tennessee uh, but another thing to make mention, since uh, Terry held that, that flower up, and Debbie and I were talking about colors a, a little while ago, because you notice this looks like somebody's just taking a paintbrush and splotched on that. So you want to tell us what, what colors that you're growing, what Debbie the market is for that? that? Okay, get up there and tell us yeah, so about the colors. Debbie, tell us about the colors. And okay. Okay. This right here, of course, is jingle bells, and we were talking about the fact that it does look like somebody is just taking a paintbrush and splotched them. But now you will also notice in here that some of them are about a white mm -hmm. area here. But that's nothing that we did. It's just the nature of the beast. That's just the way they color up. These right here are your polar bear. We've also got another white that's called a pure white. Okay. And that, one will, that one will get bigger and, bigger brighter. and brighter. Yes. Okay. And we have a pink right here next to you. Oh, yeah. That is the pink. Now, I'm trying to say uh, we've got Jingle Bell. Let's see. And then standard red, that's what y'all yeah, red. red we was mostly eating. what we sell most in the eight inch pots is mm -hmm. mostly that. And okay. we've also got one back here that's this one right here is Christmas Beauty Princess. Mm -hmm. Christmas see, Beauty. Yes, okay. and see it's going to color up a whole lot more also. Mm -hmm. Right now, 
like she said, some of them color just a little bit later than others. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice in one of our other houses in the seven and a half inch pots, these are some of the later ones that will color up last. Okay. Uh, awesome. It's about two weeks away on right, having on good color and bright size. The red, you'll see, we raised probably 80% uh, red. Okay. 80% red. And this is not the only size either, y'all. This is the larger That's pot. You have multiple pot. sizes. And, you know, you are delivering a lot of these plants too, because you said 60% of your crop is going into churches. So tell us a little bit how you do that. What's the process involved? Well, I get on the phone. We had a, we've had a list for a number of years and I'll get on the phone. I give them the price every year of what it's going to cost. Used to, we put bows on them, satin bows, but it got to the point where you didn't really notice the bows and it's so time consuming and doing the bows that we, as of last year, quit doing satin bows on the poinsettias um, because the plant itself is the beauty of it. Right. It's not the, the pot or anything, the pot cover or the bow. So it is the plant itself. So we call, we start calling them. I give them a deadline date and give them the prices. Uh, mm -hmm. On that deadline date, usually I get phone calls all day long, the, that day and the next day, giving me their orders and when they want to deliver them. Mm -hmm. So then I start after I get all the list done and I get all their delivery dates, then I try to coordinate those delivery dates so that we won't have a lot of different days going to the same area. So we try to get like in Kingsport area or the Johnson City area on one day. Now, and we deliver from now, we start delivering next week, which is Thanksgiving week, all the way up till Christmas. Wow. So, and we also have a couple of fundraisers that we do with a couple of uh, local high schools. Okay. Uh, and they take orders. They call in their orders. We deliver them to them and then they take care of distributing those. So it's just now. If I heard you correctly earlier, you have one lady that, that does drives, drives the, truck. the truck. Yes, now. So that's pretty incredible, y'all. Just to have one one person that's actually and doing her name the is Babe, by the way. Babe, Babe. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. Now we have men that work here on landscaping and things like that. But when you talk about this greenhouse work, it's women. And I know people come in here a lot. And we're sitting down up there resting. These old folks here, we need to sit down and take a break. <laughs> Well, and let, you know, that kind of, I don't know what jog, just jogged my memory, but when we were talking about chemicals and stuff there a few minutes ago, um, y'all know if, if you walk by a poinsettia or you, or you pick one up and you're not really careful, they're really tender. Yes. They're kind of what we call brittle or brickle. Uh, those stems can be kind of cumbersome at times. What yes. are you doing to alleviate some of that? Well, early problem. on, we spray them with calcium chloride. Calcium chloride. And then later on, we use calcium nitrate. Okay. And we also use micronutrients. Mm -hmm. And we feed with a poinsettia fertilized 14314. And then uh, it also has most in it, which is a micronutrient. Okay. We use molybdate date on our poinsettias. And uh, sometimes we'll put triple 20 on them, but that's if we need to push them mainly. Only we do them. soil samples, send that off about three during the growing season. And uh, once we get those in, I'm the worrier here. I drive <laughs> them all crazy, totally crazy. And I did pile when he was living. And, uh, but I know when something's wrong, I, when I, I know when it's, if it's not, of course we take pictures and we have a calendar we go by every year to mm -hmm. see size wise and stuff. And uh, so, but it's. Uh, but with poinsettias, you have to be really particular. Yes. Oh, it's an could, everyday thing. You could really lose a crop. So, you know, that's one thing y'all, if, if you're purchasing poinsettias, kind of keep some of this in the back of your mind because it's, it's not like some of our traditional pansies or you were talking about vinca earlier uh, because they also do have that as part of, of their operation they're not just here during the christmas uh, uh, season they're they're year, round. year round so you want to tell us a little bit about that as well well we start uh in uh, december actually on a spring fall uh, we do poinsettia i mean excuse me dragon cuttings and it just continues january we really get hard on cuttings we do a lot of we get a lot of unruly cuttings in here and we root those uh, and uh, then we're ready to pot them february we just pot them right on it from time to time okay and y'all are y'all have easter lilies do you, don't you do that for the easter season not anymore not anymore we okay. used to up until last year and okay. then the covid we COVID. just decided it was a good time to stop well doing we it. had so many people with allergies and yes. the smell of the yellow uh -huh. centers and their allergies the 
a lot of the churches just decided they didn't want to do that anymore. Right. So most of our churches now get hydrangeas. Okay. And uh, they are beautiful when they go to the churches. Uh, we usually hmm. try to have those for Easter. And then sometimes if we've got the overage, maybe it might make it till Mother's Day, but most of the time they're gone Easter. But okay. talking about poinsettias, we start these things in August. Yeah, that's pretty to get incredible. them ready by Thanksgiving to start selling. So when they when you get these plants in August, tell us about that. What do they look like? How does that process begin from so, point A to point B? Well, we get those in from uh, so greenhouse that raises specify in cuttings, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a little root of cutting. The root's about on a little sponge about this big. The plant itself is about like this. So we start from there and just move on till it's ready to sell. But now we put a fungicide on them two weeks after we try. And I'm watching the roots constantly because you can burn roots on anything you raise. Yeah. But I'm watching them. Maybe I'm in the greenhouses three times a day just checking roots. Okay. But now in our big plants, like these right here, our 10 inch pots, they have three cuttings in those. Okay. Now in our seven and a half inch pots, they only have one cutting in those. And then we have a four and a half inch pot that we call our pixies. And there's only one cutting in those also. Okay. Wow. But it's a, it's a process, but we enjoy it after we get over the worry part of it. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. But once they start, when they, about two weeks ago, I just let it, I could sleep a little bit then, you know. Yeah. Cause there's a lot of worry there because of temperature. Yes. Uh, the day length. Yes. Um, the darkness. I mean, you got a lot of variables there, probably more oh, yeah. so than some of our other traditional. Crops. And we just hope when we start hauling everything that the weather is good because we do not like to haul if it's freezing or snowing outside or something like that because mm -hmm. poinsettias do not like that cold. Yeah. If well, we, speak, speak to us about that. So, do you have heaters in the yeah, truck? Propane. We put little propane heaters in okay. the back of the truck. And we, we and actually, heaters. we put our pot covers, which are uh, the sleeves. sleeves. We put the pot covers on there, and then we put them down in plastic sleeves. So okay. it helps protect the plant itself, and it helps transporting them, too, so that they don't get all broke. Okay. And then we make sure then when they get the, to the church or to the fundraiser, to the high schools, or wherever they're delivered to, that they know the proper way to, to take off that sleeve. Because we've had some people that pulls that sleeve up, and the only thing that does is break the whole point set off. Oh, yeah. So they need to come down toward the bottom or just barely take a pair of scissors and slit it up the side. So it is help to protect them from the customer themselves and from us, too, you know, because it is hard to transport them. Because right. you want to make sure you don't let anything get broken because mm -hmm. you don't want to get to a customer's place and then see, oh, well, we've got several of them broken and it's because of the way we got them there. So. Well, I will say this too. We raised Prestige series of the poinsettias and they're not as brittle, hardly, they're, they're somewhat, but not near like they used to be with some of the other varieties. Okay. Uh, so we've, we've come, a, they've come a long way on research and all that on these. Mm -hmm. Wow. So yeah, just to, to reiterate, prestige. Hmm? Home care. Home care. Home care wants to get them. Oh, oh okay. yeah, home care. care. Yeah, okay. Jack is uh, talking to me behind the scenes there. So again, thanks, buddy, for that. But um, so they purchased the poinsettias. Then what? Well, how how do we take care of these once we get them home? Well, uh, best way we can tell you is pick the pot up. It will tell you immediately if it needs to be watered or not if you stick your finger in that dirt it just tells you how wet it is how deep you put your finger that weight's going to tell you okay so usually it's according to the heat a person has in the house or a business but uh checking that weight is going to help you more than anything but uh usually um if it's really light i would probably put as much as a cup uh, uh like a teacup full so that would probably two cups of water uh, okay. in a poinsettia and some people use ice cubes and that's okay too uh six eight uh, ice cubes maybe every couple of days but check that weight of that pot all the time pick that weight up and that'll tell you if you need water every other day every day or three or four days okay what about light placement near a window what how do best we do that? is close to light because they do like light during the day. But now, once you buy your poinsettia, it's red. It's on its way. You don't have to worry. We have the hard part. Right, exactly. So, but <laughs> a lot of people like to keep their poinsettias over, and they do get really great green in the summer. So, they wonder, what do I do with that when I bring it back in the house? 
before frost. Mm -hmm. Well, some people say, well, I put it in the cellar, I put it in the basement, but it didn't do anything. It never did. Okay, it didn't because it needs the daylight hours. Right. It's just like me or you. It is awake, so it needs the sunshine. Mm -hmm. I go to sleep at night, I close my eyes, same way with poinsettias. They want darkness, they want light. So remember that total darkness isn't going to get you colored up the second year. So remember, if you're sitting in a closet, you got to bring it out. That's correct. Yeah. And make sure when you do have them in your houses, don't put them near an air vent because they do not like to have that air put on them. Yeah, the doors or anything. Yeah. yeah even better, come back to the greenhouse and just buy it. Yeah, no, we like that too. Yeah, we like that too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and another thing, we were talking about this a little bit beforehand. Um, it is the fact that these are tropical plants that are actually chilling sensitive. So you also want to be careful in the transport, right? No, absolutely. Yes. We have we have run to the back of trucks to load them, let me tell you. Mm. Uh, we try to tell people, Debbie, when she's scheduling everything, she tells people we'll be there as early as we can. And usually she will call if it's a really cold morning. We won't be there for a couple hours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've got to get those things warmed up and everything. And used to, we could back our truck into our shop area, but we closed that in uh, several years ago. We kept them warm that way and went out with them. But now we don't do that. And so we have to have a little bit of time if it's, you know, gets down in below 30. Right. Okay. And just a, another shout out. Again, we, we are in Rogersville, Tennessee, up in Hawkins County at Martin's Greenhouse. And we're going to try to bring Jack in here just to give him a shout out. Um, Jack helps us too. If we need any help, we know we could go to Jack. Yeah. Um, and Jack's really good about that stuff. But also with um, their operation here, like I said, it's not just about the poinsettias. It's not, um, if, if you come through the shop up here, you're going to see just greenery, lots of wreaths, y'all, beautiful boughs. Uh, it smells really good. Plus all the bows. They must yeah. have bow making parties, y'all, because I have never seen <laughs> so many velvet bows, satin bows. Um, but they, you do a lot of, um, for the town of Rogers, Rogers, City of Rogers City. Okay. Yes, we do the red velvet bows that goes on their lamppost right. and they buy their wreaths from us, garland from us. And we have several sizes, like we have a 12 inch wreath, 16 inch wreath, 24 inch wreath and 36 inch wreath. Now that does not mean the outside dimensions. This is the inside rings that are used to make these. Okay. So your 12 inch wreath that is 12 inches in here, probably is gonna measure like 20 to 24 inches from side to side. And a lot of people don't realize that. They say, oh, I want a big wreath. And then when they come and look at this big wreath, it's, it's way out here. They yeah. don't realize when we're talking 24 inches or 16 or 12 inch, that's the inside area. Right. Very cool, very cool. So, yeah, do you want to tell us anything yeah. about why local horticulture businesses are so important for what you do and your master gardener volunteer? Well, for one thing, you know, we're able to periodically assist with these folks. It gives us a chance to get out and visit with different producers. And we really enjoy working with Martin's Greenhouse and our other greenhouses throughout the county. Uh, you know, it's our job to make sure that we get them the information that they need to be successful in their business. They're part of our economy within the, the county and the city. So uh, we feel like we have a part in that and we need to make sure we're doing our due diligence to address those uh, issues. And I would like to just brag a little bit about Martin's Greenhouse. Uh, they started from a very small operation. And it has grown tremendously over the past few years. And, and just want to emphasize, it is a family business. It is a truly a family business. And uh, this group of ladies, get out of the way, folks. Get out of the way. <laughs> they work. They work. And uh, they're, they're an intricate part of our community. Uh, they do a lot of services for the community. They help our program when we need things to to assist us with uh, Master Gardener. Uh, we just had a, a small herb class. They helped, them, helped us with that. And uh, we're very appreciative. Because Debbie loves to cook. Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> we, we really don't want to talk about that because you know we were already talking earlier about the herb classes that Jack and them did. And I said, let me tell you, I don't care what kind of herb it is. I don't cook anyway, so it doesn't really matter to me. It really doesn't. But this is what I'm talking about and what Jack's saying. They have a lot of fun. It's not it's not just a family business. It's a family 
business that fellowships and has fun. And like he said, they're creating those connections and building those partnerships and building the community right here in Northeast Tennessee. So ladies, do y'all have anything else you want to add? I would like to stress, buy local. Yeah, I mean, this, absolutely. the small mom and pop businesses need your help, need your business to stay in business. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the reason we try to stress and all the other businesses here in our area, Hawkins County, they always try to stress, buy local. And I know absolutely. sometimes you can't do that, but we try to do that as much as we can. Yeah, we don't care if you're buying a flower, if you're buying produce from the farmers raising produce, get out there and support them, you know, buy those things. They're raising good stuff. Yeah. Thanks to Jack. It's all yeah. about the quality. <laughs> Absolutely. And the quality is at your local level. Yes. yes. So we're not trying to, you know, say Lowe's or Home Depot's bad, y'all, but take a look around. Natalie's been panning around in the greenhouse here. You're not going to get this kind of quality Absolutely. At, at the traditional box stores. And, uh, you know, when you, when you bring a poinsettia that's grown here, you take it home. I mean, you know, there, it's been grown with with love and laughter and you know that's okay. what part of the season um the holiday season is all about after all oh Thank actually actually if uh, Lowe's and Home Depot would like to send some people down here we might could help them out <laughs> <laughs> I definitely <laughs> know you could teach them a trick yeah. <laughs> Anything else y'all want to add before no, we thank you, ladies, yes, for this opportunity? Thank you, thank thank you for you, getting Jack. the word out about yeah, our you're welcome to greenhouses you. and our local businesses here. And like we say, Jack's a good friend, and we always enjoy him coming down here to see us. Just keep him in line. We well, drive. Keep him in line, ladies. And ladies, thank you all. Thank you. Yeah, all. thank you all. We we just Have greatly us. appreciate you taking the time. We know this is your busy season, but thanks for sharing with us and uh, with the. Uh, Master Gardeners all across the state of Tennessee. And if you're ever in Northeast Tennessee, y'all, or just need a little visit, you know, come on. That's this right. is where the action's at. Right. That's right. right. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Natalie. So while Anna gets her screen share going on, I want everybody to be thinking about what your favorite activity for 2021 was as far as Master Gardener things go. We're going to do a quick little recap here and talk about things that are coming up for 2020. But I want everybody to pull up your chat right now. Um, if you're not sure where that's located, that's at the bottom center of your screen and looks like one of those little cartoon message bubbles and says chat underneath it. Pull that up and just, you know, it doesn't have to be a long explanation. Just say if you had a favorite like Friday focus session that you really enjoyed, um, or, you know, an on-site location that you thought was excellent or any type of, you know, online learning or any of our um, regional group uh, get-togethers or conferences that we had, um, just pop that into the chat box for us because we want to have a record and know um, what you all enjoyed the most, okay? So let's just, if you could, just take a second and pop them in there. Let's see what people are putting so far. We've got Goose Chase. Oh, that was a while ago. Yes, Hit the Trails. Goose Chase was part of our Hit the Trails uh, fun fiasco that we had going on. What else do we have? Oh, a lot, a lot more popping in here. Good. Oh, the Daylilies class with Peggy. Oh, the Opryland. Wasn't that fun? That was awesome. I have not, I myself haven't been to Opryland in several years, so it was, it was nice to get a little taste of that. Uh, Mel see other states, this is yes. good. Melanie's Monday Musings, yes, yes, for certain. She was so persistent with those musings. She mused more than anyone that I know. <laughs> Friday focuses in the different states. Florida, yeah, Florida was kind of that uh, that first um, off-site location. It was it was awesome. Kind of kicked us off for all those. Alabama, Ohio, good deal. And just keep them coming. Just keep popping them in there, and I'll let um, I'll let Anna go ahead and get things going there. Hey, all right. Thank you very much, Les, for um, running us through that fun um recap of some of the great things that have happened over the last year and we are actually going to do that for the final half of our session natalie you needed this it. presentation um so if you want to anna you can just go ahead and advance through uh some of these fun slides we did some celebrating in 2021 with our masks on but sometimes we also 
got out and enjoyed some fabulous touring through the woods of Tennessee, as well as um, had some really fun outdoor events. This is actually Hamilton County. So this year was really the opportunity to jump in and kind of try some different kinds of programming. So we can't use our big expo centers by all means. Uh, jump in and do some of your events uh, outside. Um, we also had some great visiting that went on. This is actually a picture of a Hamilton County, Rutherford County Master Gardener collaboration and some touring that went on uh, throughout the summer. So when we had a lot of outdoor events, it was a great opportunity to connect amongst our Master Gardener groups. So some really good travel was had uh, throughout the course of the season. You can go ahead and bounce to the next one. And what we are gonna do for this next section is really just let some members of the Master Gardener work group jump in there and, and share some of the fun activities that we have done this year. Our year kicked off in January and February with some great intern trainings, some together and some uh, digitally by individual counties. And so we're gonna um, have some uh, look, fun to look back with some fun videos here and uh, share some of those activities. So I'm gonna turn the floor over to Rachel and Anna and they are gonna be a part of our uh, they were a key part of our intern uh, training team, and they're going to share a little bit with you about our collaborative training, and then Taylor and Jenny are going to share some about their individual county events. Okay, so we have a nice video here that Natalie has put together just to kind of recap our first ever collaborative training that we did across the state, and so for the first time we all trained together at once, and it was a really interesting experience. We started off with a tour of the state. We went over to East Tennessee virtually and tried to show everything that's unique about that part of the state. We came to the outer basin, talked about the different soil types and about what uh, water and its watersheds look like in different parts of the state. We met all of our different friends and specialists across the state um, and really got to see different things and meet different and utilize everyone's strengths. So like here, we might not have ever gotten to see Natalie's uh, knowledge about potting plants and starting seeds and even her house plant knowledge is something we don't always get to utilize, but this gave us an opportunity to do that. And so now we have that and it's always available to us in these video forms. So there are a whole lot of blessings came out of this unexpectedly, but even though we couldn't always be together in person, I think it really brought us together closer as a state and all across our whole program um, from Bristol to Memphis. So I was really happy to be a part of this and I'll turn it over to Rachel. Yes, and I hope that you'll go back and view some of those presentations, uh, hopefully, and continue to learn from those. So I think that's the benefit of having this you know, virtual is that now all of those are captured and we can continue to learn from those as we go. And I just love looking back through all these things to see if like you can see that here talking about this topic and then people and specialists and everyone gets to share what they are passionate about. And not only get access to you know all of these people's knowledge, but also just seeing you know their their county. You know, this is Mitchell right here outside in the turf plots. And unless you're from right around Murfreesboro, you're probably not coming here to see these turf plots in Murfreesboro with Mitchell. But I felt like we all got to be present right there with that person and see that uh, with them through their eyes. Um, and not only that, but see all of the produce around the state. So normally we're not you know, right there with Natalie in the research plots, or we're not right there in Jackson at the station, but we got to be you know, there at the station or at the research uh, plantings with those people. So seeing Celeste and Jason on Facebook Live all the time. And it feels like you're just more of a, a huge family across the state. Um, and these are our counties. And we got to go through and, and shout out everybody's name. And again, you know, normally being part of that training in your own county is really special. But I think we see everyone across the state together and getting to shout out those interns across the state was really important and exciting. So we are going to do this again next year for intern training. And everyone is going to be a part of that, how it makes sense for their local group. So I really hope that we can continue this momentum 
and make sure that everyone still feels a part of their local group and celebrate that local family, but also make you feel like you're a part of this larger program across the state, across the nation, and see the importance of that. So again, thank you all for participating in that and rolling with the punches as we went each week. You know, we are not tech support or anything like that. And I know all of you jumped right in there with us to make this happen. So thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for jumping in and, you know, not letting the fear of messing up, you know, make us not do this together. So thank you for jumping right in there. And I want you to put in the chat right now, the funniest thing that happened on Zoom this year. Yeah. <laughs> So please put that in the chat if you want to. And now I'm going to turn this over to Taylor, uh, Taylor Reader in Williamson County. Hey, everybody. I'm a little delayed. I'm in the car. I'm not driving, so don't you worry. Don't worry. Someone else is driving. But um, yes, yeah, so we did our uh, training. We had 21 uh, interns and 17 of those interns certified in this first slide. Um, our big thing this year was our intern project, and we were blessed enough to have a private home offer up their giant garden for us to use for our project um, so that we didn't have to be in the public in case anyone felt uncomfortable and they could come and go as they please. And so we divided our interns up into groups and they each picked a theme for their garden. And so we've got a medicinal garden, a vegetable garden, cut flower, pollinator. And so all of these are different beds and different themes and they worked so hard on these. I borrowed some of their pictures from their presentations. And on the next slide, um, you will see they're giving their presentations at the end of the year, kind of a recap of what they've learned. Um, and uh, not everyone was able to attend, but we had quite a few come and get their certificates. But it was great, it was a night class um, and it was on a different day than y'all. So we didn't get to participate live with the statewide group, but we got um, to use some of those resources, which was great. And it was wonderful. We did kind of a hybrid. So we did a little mix of in-person and Zoom and that worked really well for us. And it was just a great experience uh, getting to try new technology and new ways of learning and teaching. It was a learning experience for me as well. Um, and so we had a good time. Uh, we were very blessed. Uh, to be able to get together in person quite a bit and learn some pruning techniques and all kinds of fun things. So it was a good year. All right, so I'm gonna do a quick little recap here um, about Hit the Trails. Again, if you wanna press play, yeah, good deal. So this was kind of a new adventure for us. So we had never kind of embarked on a large um, group activity of this sort and I think it went pretty well so there was a little bit of a learning curve there at the beginning you know we had to get everybody trained on how to get registered into the goose ch goose chase app and how to um, work it and upload their pictures and videos but once folks got, a got the hang of it man we had so much fun with this project and so I just want to say thank you to everybody who joined in and went out into these natural areas right and just got active and got closer with nature that was our goal for the month of may was just to really challenge people to get outdoors and um you know visit some of these places that maybe we weren't taking full advantage of i know i have several um state parks and natural areas i guess that um because i just don't visit you know enough and so i hope that some of you are able to do the same thing and get closer with nature and um, and also build some master gardener relationships right so we had these general challenges um but then we had some that were worth like extra points and we tried to always make those um center around people so not just going out and taking a picture of xyz plants or xyz um, wildlife but involving other master gardeners involving park staff um and, and just you know being around being around other folks and so i think that uh, we achieved we achieved our purpose and i hope that we can do something similar to this again in the future I and mean, we had a great time um and maybe we can maybe we can do it again
Yeah, absolutely. And some of the, in fact, some of the ideas that we have for the goose chase 2022 uh, might actually include another state or bringing in some other people to, to give Rutherford County a little bit of competition. <laughs> oh, I know, right? So we have to we step our game up over here in the, the far east and far western regions. Uh, I had a, a great time, but you know, it would be even more fun with more people. But it wasn't just digital things. We had some opportunities to do some great live outdoor events, and we are going to pass the mic to Mr. Upchurch in Cumberland County to talk about some live outdoor events this year. Well, I tell you, it uh, really was a pleasure finally to be able to get back and visit with people uh, from across the state, and we had some really good conferences, and we'll talk about one that we didn't have to have, or we didn't get an opportunity to have later, but uh, we got to kick it off with our first time that we met in person in a long time at our central region master gardener program that we had down in Warren County, the nursery capital of Tennessee and some may say the world. And we were very fortunate to have the Warren County master gardeners uh, leading that charge and maybe with a little bit of an assist from Heath Noakes in terms of setting up some tours. But this was really kind of our first hybrid event. We started the day out with a online Zoom training from uh, Dr. Alan Wyndham that talked about the history of dogwoods. And then we would branch on into our uh, live versions where we met at the gardens or our park there in Warren County in the Barron River and had a short program and then went and hit these tours across Warren County. Uh, the image you see up there is one that I really found is fascinating where we uh, attended the Cumberland uh, Valley nurseries where they propagate uh, close to a million peach trees annually and ship those out across the nation. Uh, we got to see Boyd's Nursery, Daylily Nursery, Tommy Savage Nursery, uh, and it was just a tremendous day of education topped off by getting to go to the Cumberland Caverns and actually tour the cage, uh, cave, which is something uh, I had never had an opportunity. So if you want to kind of flip through those, we can look at uh, the different slides that we saw there. And I think we had an image of showing some of the propagation and us standing out and learning some of these sites and just visiting with these producers and what they were doing. And I think that's what the education of these events are about. And here's Boyd's Nursery. And I don't think a lot of people really truly realize the size and the thousands of acres that a lot of these nurseries had. And so it was just a great uh, day. We've got Heath Noakes there in the middle. We didn't have our plant model, Lucas Hallman, who's probably just off to the right there, but uh, just a wonderful day. The next event that we had was actually in our Eastern region. And that was later uh, in the uh, summer early fall of the year, and it was one that was hosted by the Fentress County Master Gardeners up in Fentress County and uh, Mr. John Gunner. We got to go to the Highland Manor Winery, and this is out on the porch of the Highland Manor Winery, uh, which is the oldest uh, operational winery in the state of Tennessee. Uh, we got to tour the winery. Uh, we broke out into two different uh, groups, and one session, we had Dr. Lockwood talking to us about uh, uh, fruit harvesting and evaluating the sugar content of those fruits. And we used a couple of different methods to do that, which made for a really nice lab experience. While part of our group actually went and toured Muddy Pond and got to see them make sawgrum molasses uh, and uh, tour an old uh, uh, general store there with all kinds of neat things. We came back together and we went to Mr. Uh, Bobby Edwards Farm, where we saw a very local fruit vegetable operation that sold flowers uh, and operated out of the little stand that you can see kind of back to your left. Uh, a very interesting day. And we wrapped that day up down at PWP Nurseries. So yeah, you can go forward, which is Wolf River Valley or down in the Wolf River in the north end of Fentress County. Very, very historical site. Uh, just a tremendous greenhouse there where they talked about all the different plantings. So probably right now, if you went back and saw them, you'd see thousands upon thousands of uh, poinsettias. So it was just a tremendous opportunity to get together, to visit with each other, 
uh, to have the, uh, the, the fellowship, uh, to seeing one another and learning at the same time. It was just a tremendous opportunity. And that is my highlight uh, for the year. We love the fun of live, but we have also had a lot of fun this year with some of our digital events. So this little video is a compilation of the now about a dozen Friday focuses that we have had this year. And you know that last year we primarily did these in the state of Tennessee. And what we did to really crank it up for 2021 was pool our connections and bring in people from all over the country. So January kicked us off from Florida and we just went through the season bringing in a great Tennessee site and pairing it with some of our Master Gardener friends from other states. We visited Florida, we visited Alabama in addition to fabulous uh, Tennessee sites. Right there is where the real work got done. You can see um, some of our tech team with their masks on at uh, Cheekwood. And then by the time we got to May, we did the most fun and I'll just say completely honestly, the most stressful Friday focuses that we've done because there's just not very much cell service in state parks, if you don't know. Um, and so Chris Cooper, of course, our television star, led us off for our very first one. The second one we got to visit uh, with Linda, one of our master gardeners at Cedars of Lebanon. These are some of our Tennessee naturalists that have really taught us as the extension personnel, a lot about the native plants. We went to Seven Islands. It was a gorgeous day, one of our newest state parks. This was on May the 21st. We brought in some of our uh, graduate students from University of Tennessee and their Bob White expertise. This is some of our uh, great team that was present for that day. It was so much fun to bring in personnel from the state parks. So we visited with rangers and we had the state naturalists. So, um, Taylor really led the charge at Montgomery Bell, actually our oldest uh, state park. And then we jumped back in the summer and in the fall into some great sessions from around the state and from around the country. Knoxville, El Paso, Texas. September was in Ohio, as well as Lebanon with some of our fabulous tree folks. So we met master gardeners and coordinators from uh, other states. That right there was my favorite piece of recording from our entire year. <laughs> We'd been running around trying to get some cell phone signal. We'd lost Taylor a couple times and we got this funny snapshot um, of the vehicle uh, with Randy and with Taylor um, waving to us and thanking us for uh, being a part of the day. And I think that like that picture right there, I think in many ways summarizes what was our digital um, adventure for this year. It was so much fun to bring in expertise from around the country, but especially from around the state. And I hope that if I haven't said it, I'm going to say it now. It's all of these other panelists on this call that really make this happen. Taylor and Anna and Celeste and Melody and Rachel and Greg and Evangelon and the whole team. Um, we typically had anywhere from two to half a dozen people at these sites to, to really make this happen. And our mics, you know, we continue to improve. But we just thank you for uh, riding along with us. It's been an adventure, but it's been uh, so much fun. And so those were events that were um, specifically focused on Master Gardeners. And we also had a series that took place on the third Thursday that focused really on broader horticulture education for the whole state of Tennessee. All right, yeah, we uh, we did kind of continue in that same vein with the digital programming. And you can see here, we kicked off the season with Third Thursday up in Berea, Kentucky with Dr. Bill Best, who's world renowned for his collection of heirloom seeds and candy roasters. And not only that, but just an enormous amount of, of knowledge and stories to share um, with all of us. Uh, from there, we moved on to um, Menville and Franklin, where we opened it up to sustainability in the landscape. And the coolest thing about that, we got to share exactly what a smart yard was, how to incorporate these ideas with like-minded folks just like us. Now, keep in mind, like Natalie said, our Thursday, um, third Thursdays were open to the general public. Um, then we go to Crossville to Greg Upchurch's Orchard and we had um, the finest. Uh, Seth um, was there, Natalie and Greg, and, and we looked at in-season issues from plant diseases to insect identification, how to treat that. Uh, with blueberries, blackberries, and grapes. So a lot of knowledge uh, that got to be shared. You see Greg and Seth there. Um, Seth is, is 
practiced as an entomologist, so he had a lot of information. And the cool thing about it, it was that we got to see it in season. That's what um, the digital programming is all about. From there, we moved into um, Andrea uh, joining us from Knoxville and kind of showcasing the Smart Yards program. We've heard a lot about that in the last um, month, uh, but she's just kind of showing here those nine modules and, and what it takes to actually get certified as a Smart Yard, 36 inches. Uh, from there, we went on to Jackson, where um, Celeste kind of put those principles into play. Uh, right plant, right place, um, how to conserve water appropriately, and all that good stuff from the uh, UT Gardens in Jackson. And last week, or not last week, last month, we were at Gaylord um, Opryland, and how cool is that, y'all? We got to um, actually meet the director of the conservatory, scoped out all kinds of really cool plants, house plants, learned a lot about that. Um, and, and I know Taylor was talking about the wealth of plants that she has at home, but you know, a lot of this stuff, we can uh, put these principles into play in our own houses, sunrooms, whatever. Uh, and it is the season, y'all, uh, Christmas season. You've seen us joining um, with you today from uh, Rogersville with the poinsettias. And you know, that's one of the really cool things that Gaylord Opryland is known for. And it doesn't cost a dime to just walk through there and see all the beautiful uh, merriness that's going on this time of year. So make sure you check that out. And you know, as the snow starts to fly, y'all, you can just go back and click that little YouTube button, hit play and learn, learn, learn. That's what it's all about. And share with your friends too. All right, so we'll just kind of, we'll keep going, rolling right along. So building upon that, I I'm, I'm hope that you all understand that 2021 has been year of the smart yard. If I could go back and rename it from last, this past January, that's what I would call it, year of the smart yard, right? So we, we rolled out the smart yards program with the new virtual trainings, the modules that are online. So we took advantage of, of opportunities to share that information not only with master gardeners during the Friday focus sessions, but also with the general public during those Thursday court sessions. And then for the month of November, um, for our volunteer development that we traditionally do August or November with you guys, we wanted to again focus that on smart yards. And um, we had three sessions. Um, what is Tennessee smart yards? What is a Tennessee smart yard community? And we wrap things up with discussing how Tennessee Extension Master Gardeners and Tennessee Smart Arts can work together. And I just want to thank you all. We had great attendance for these programs, like around 75-ish, I'd say, for every session. And you guys gave us so much feedback. We were essentially, yes, we were sharing information with you, but we were using you. I don't know if you realized it or not, kind of as a focus group. So y'all were our sounding board for ideas, places where we had gaps in some of these newer programs that we're trying to develop for uh, smart arts communities as a whole. And um, just really trying to bring that program together and make it more sense, uh, make more sense for everybody. Can we advance another slide there, Anna? And so I just kind of wanted to quickly wrap up and tell you what came of, of these uh, sessions that we had. So we've got a whole, um, a whole plethora, if you will, of promotional materials that are ready and available for master gardeners to be using through community outreach events or in whatever fashion uh, you may see to apply those ready and available to you all. We've got two page flyer, we've got social media posts, table QR codes, rack cards, brochures, the list goes on and on. They can be accessed by our shared Google Drive called Cultivating Connections. If you have a Gmail account, um, we can invite you or you can request access to that file. If you do not, we have compiled these things um, in PDFs. And if you were part of that training session in November, everyone received those uh, late last week or early this week or late last week. I can't remember exactly my days are getting all confused. <laughs> um, but yes, so know that those are available. And again, want to thank everybody. So if we can go to that last slide about Smart Yards. Um, I want to remind everyone, if you view the modules to become certified as a Tennessee Smart Yard, as a Master Gardener, you get to count five hours of education. Well, in order to actually certify, you, at, you also have to achieve 36 inches of action steps. And we want you all, as you are doing these action steps in your landscape, to capture these um, principles that you're putting into play in your landscape. And we want you to share those photos with us so that we can help expand our photo library 
and inspire people across the state on how to um, implement smart guards in a variety of different settings. So once you complete your certification from the um, online, right, Tennessee Smart Yards, like UTK.edu, you're going to get a confirmation email. Inside that email, there is a link, and you'll click on that link, and this is what it looks like right here on the right. You put your name in, you put your address of your property where you're doing your principles, and uh, your email address, and then you just upload your files. We're asking for five files. If you do this, you will also be able to count five hours of service. So if you fully complete the Smart Arts program with your education and sharing these photos of your action steps with us, you'll be able to count five hours of education, five hours of service. Okay, I'm off the soapbox. Yeah, go Smart Arts. See you next year, 2022. All right, that was an awesome recap of 2021. And we are really excited about what's coming up next year. So we are offering again the opportunity for collaborative intern training. These are going to be live training sessions and you'll be able to get together with other folks in your county to watch them do hands-on activities as well as answer questions and just really be a personal but also um, very cohesive and uh, in-depth series. So that is going to run the months of February, March, and April some together time for lectures, but also a lot of time to dig in and do hands-on interactive activities in your local counties. And to build on that, because we have the opportunity to engage and interact more than we did last year, we are also going to have a new item, which is going to be the Friday field days. And so what we are gonna do is for that training season, on the, la the first Friday, sorry, of every month, we are going to have live sessions and these are really going to be workshops and opportunities to dig in and really focus on the practices that we've covered in intern training. These are going to be specifically for interns, but we are definitely going to engage some existing master gardeners. On each of these days, we're going to have an event in each region. We're going to focus on fruit in March. April is going to be vegetables and May are going to be ornamentals. And so that's just a little bit of what we have planned for the spring. Another great thing that we are going to have in the spring is going to be the rescheduled Western Region Conference. So our Montgomery County friends had a great event scheduled for us in September. The numbers were a little bit high. The meeting was planned to be indoors. And so we decided to postpone. And that is going to be on March the 25th and the 26th of 2022. And so it's going to be a great day in Clarksville with native grasslands, with ornamentals, with trees and arboretum. So we definitely want you to save that date. Also uh, coming up next year, we have the state conference. And so you can see we've carefully tried to make sure that you have the opportunity to visit all of these, right? So our rescheduled regional is gonna be in March. And then once we get into June, they're gonna be a state conference that is gonna be for everybody. This is actually the rescheduled 2020 state conference. So our Northeast Tennessee Master Gardeners had a very good uh, jump start on the planning for this event. It's gonna be really kind of like a local food sort of theme. So it's gonna be a great taste and flavor of East Tennessee on Thursday the 9th, Friday the 10th, and Saturday the 11th. And it just so happens to be rhododendron season in the mountains. And so that is gonna be how we kick off and, uh, and finish that session. Um, also, I've been uh, watching some of the conversation in the chat box. We are also, of course, going to hand out our Search for Excellence Awards in June. So late December, early part of January, you'll see the information for those awards coming out. Because we are having a June conference instead of a March or an April conference, we have a little bit more time to get those awards and judgings and things like that done. So don't worry, we haven't forgotten, but it will definitely occur uh, next year. So um, as we just kind of close out uh, this slide set, um, we just wanna say thanks so much for coming with us on the ride in 2021. I know that we focused a lot on technology, but never mistake us. It's all about the people uh, behind the technology. And so it's our relationships and our connections that really make this happen. And so we are just really um, thankful to you for staying engaged and committed. You are the heart of this program. And we look forward to another year of walking, running, hiking, paddling, uh, whatever it takes. Uh, to keep y'all engaged. So thanks so much to, to the team that's on here and to all of you for all of the critical leadership and energy and investment that you make in your local groups. 2021 was great and we are excited about what's coming up in 2022. 
So um, thanks so much for uh, joining in. There will be a recording of this. Uh, we'll, we'll show you the great Poinsettia uh, sessions and, uh, and all those uh, great content. Um, but look for more information coming up over the course of the winter about search for excellence and all that uh, fun stuff. But enjoy some hort for the holidays. Poinsettias, local Christmas trees, maybe a few Brussels sprouts. We don't want to leave out those vegetables. See y'all later. Thanks a bunch.